So I promised you a video about rigging out your EOS R5 or R6 to make it more into a baby cinema camera and today is this day. But we are going to approach this video a little differently than I would usually do and this is going to be a little bit more relaxed because I got my second camera angle right up top and I'm going to do this a little less scripted and more live in front of you, assembling everything, talking about all these things because I have everything laid out right in front of me. So without wasting any more time, let's roll the intro, start the video. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Fix. So since we only have so many cameras and I'm recording on the R6 for our top angle, I'm going to display everything on the EOS R5. But 95% of everything that I'm saying is true to the R6 as well. And if it's not, I will make a note on that and I will probably overlay this with a little bit of B-roll of the R6 in particular. So if you're an R6 shooter, don't worry, everything stays true for the R6 as well. So before we start rigging, let's actually talk about why we would rig our camera in the first place. And number one is that you want to add a little bit of weight to your camera to make the whole setup a little easier and more stable when shooting handheld. And the extra weight actually helps a lot when it comes to stabilization. Because the EOS R5 as well as the R6, they are really small and lightweight cameras. So if you add a little bit of weight, like a cage, a top handle, a monitor, it really makes for more stable handheld shooting. Speaking of more stable shots, if you have more options to actually grab your camera, like a top handle for example, that goes a long way for getting more stable handheld shots. Especially when you do a lot of low angle shooting, having the options to grip your camera from the top handle instead of on the side really goes a long way for getting more stable footage. And the next and one of the biggest things is more mounting options because the camera itself only has a cold shoe on top and that's pretty much it. So if you wanna mount an external monitor, a microphone or even additional accessories, there's really limited space. So overall having a cage with a top handle that you can mount additional stuff to it is really great when shooting video. And one more thing is security, because when you mount your camera to a gimbal or a tripod, you only have a quarter inch screw on the bottom when not using a cage. But with a cage, you actually have more mounting options on the bottom, as well as a 3 8 quarter inch thread. So with this, it's actually way more secure when mounting it to your tripod and it doesn't really shift around a lot, which happens when you only use the quarter inch screw that is on the bottom of your camera. So one thing to note before we start this video, everything is my personal opinion and I'm not sponsored by anyone, even though I will showcase a lot of different brands in this video, but none of them actually paid for this video or have anything to do with this video at all. So in my personal opinion, what do we need to turn our ears are into a baby cinema camera. And in my opinion, like I already said, we need to start with a cage to be able to mount more stuff to it, to add a little bit of weight and security to it. Next up, we need a top handle to get better grip and have even more mounting options. Other than that, we also need a microphone to get way better sound. And we also need an external monitor to judge our framing, exposure and focus better. And last but not least, when shooting outdoors, we also need ND filters. So this is what I will be covering in this video today. All right, first up, let's talk about the cage. And I have two different options for you. One is from Smallrig and one is from Aitzen. And there's various other options out there, but these are the ones that I could get my hands on. And they're also the well better known brands out there. So let's start with the one from Aitzen. And this is a really nice and modern design. It's also really high quality but it's also really expensive. I paid $172 for the entire setup, including shipping. And it doesn't come with a NATO rail. And I will be talking about the NATO rail system a little later, but for now I had to attach a NATO rail by small rig on top of the 8 cent cage to make this work for me. In here I will be showcasing this with the EOS R5 first, and I won't be mounting everything because I will take it off real quick afterwards. And I like that it does have these rails on top that actually make for a really nice design and a really nice fit. What I don't really like about it though is that it is somewhat blocking the mode buttons here. You can still access these by just, you know, pressing your fingernail in here, but it's overall not a really great fit for the EOS R5. With the R6, you don't have any of these problems and it's a really nice streamlined fit and it also looks really good. 
if it's worth the price. I will be talking about it later when we're comparing this to the small rig. But I think for the EOS R5, it's not the best option just because you don't have access to this button over here, which again, isn't really a problem on the EOS R6 because it doesn't have this mode button. But for the R5, I don't think it's the best fit out there. So my other option, and that is actually my favorite, is the smaller cage. Not only is it less expensive, but I also think it has better features. The build quality is also really great, almost pretty much the same. And it does come with NATO rails all over the place. It has a NATO rail up top. It also has one on the bottom. And I think it even has a NATO rail on the side. So if you have any of the NATO rail accessories, which I do have a lot, this is definitely the better fit. And one more thing that's really cool about the small rig cage is that it has these location pins. So these actually fit very nicely into the bottom of your R5 body or R6 body, and therefore it doesn't wiggle and it can't really shift around, which might actually be the case with the one from 8sim. All right, so all we need to do is just put this in right here. And then there's another really cool thing if you flip this thing around, because you actually do have a tool built into the cage. So if you're out and about and you don't really have a screwdriver or a tool set, you can actually use this to tighten all your screws. So let's actually do this real quick. So align this. And let's see if this is in focus, if I'm actually seeing anything. All right. So, and as we already said, all these went into the location pins designed with the R5 and the R6. So this is actually really not going anywhere and it actually sits very nicely. So now let's put on our lens. Oops. So, and here we got the cage from small rig. And like I said, this is a really nice fit. Also, when you grab it on the side, you hardly even notice that the cage is there. And this is a really nice design and I can totally recommend this. And opposed to our 8 cent cage, we can actually press this button, use the wheel because everything sits a little higher than on the 8 cent cage. So overall features of this cage, we do have this tool built in, which I think is really nice. We also have a lot of screw mounting options on the bottom. We do have a cold shoe on top. We have NATO rails all over the place. And obviously we can also use our straps with it. I still have them attached to the camera, but if you want to, you can have that. So for me, I would probably recommend the small rig cage for both the R6 as well as the Eros R5. Not only because it's cheaper, but I also think that it holds more features. So next up, let's talk about the top handle. And I think the top handle is a really important tool because this is where I grab my camera 90% of the times. And I have four different options right here and they're all from Smallrig. I haven't tried any from other brands because they're usually at least twice the price and I have really good experience with the Smallrig product. So let's talk about the Smallrig things. So first off, this is a product that doesn't feature a NATO rail. So you have to screw this onto the top of your cage. The cool thing about this is that it is rubber, so it's really nice to grip. And you also have a cold shoe for mounting a monitor. Overall, I can definitely not recommend this, even though it really feels comfortable. I really wouldn't want to use this to screw on and off because then when I want to do some photography or if I want to mount this to a gimbal, it's really tedious to get off. So overall, this is not a recommendation. So if you're looking out for something like this, I wouldn't recommend buying that. Then next up on our list is this one. And I've been using this for a while and it's also not the most comfortable and it's also not the most feature rich, but it offers a NATO rail. So with this one, you can easily attach it to your small rig cage and just tighten it with this screw and you don't need any tools for it at all. The one thing that I do like about this top handle that makes it stand out from the competition is that it has mounting options on the side here. And you can use this to attach a cold shoe mount from Smallwick as well to use with a microphone. So if you really want to have a quick run and gun solution where you have everything mounted to the top handle, you can actually use this to mount the monitor on top right here with a cold shoe. And then you put on another cold shoe on the side and you can mount your microphone to it. And that way with one click, you can actually take off pretty much everything and only have the bare bones camera afterwards. And now let's talk about my two favorite options. And this is the one that actually comes with 
the R5 when you buy the cage and they actually recommend this as a bundle. And this has some couple really cool features. One, you have a cold shoe on top that you can actually lock via the security pin and that comes in really handy. The next thing is that you have a 15 millimeter rod clamp. And here you can actually use this to attach a follow focus or even a microphone or whatever you wanna attach to it. And this is really unique and comes in handy if you shoot a lot of manual focus and you wanna attach a follow focus. Another really cool feature is that it comes with an alley wrench built in and you can never have enough alley wrenches on set. And if you wanna tighten your monitor mounts or anything, um, this is really comfortable to have and you don't need to have it in your bag somewhere. So I really do like this as well. It also comes with a NATO rail so you can quickly attach it and detach it. And what I don't really like about this I don't really have the biggest hands, but when using this, sometimes I actually hit this uh, wheel on the bottom to tighten it to your camera with my index finger. And that is something that I don't really like. Again, I don't really have the biggest of hands. So if you're on the larger hand side, this might actually be a problem. If you have really small and thin hands, then this wouldn't become a problem at all. So my last option, also from Small Rig, of course, is this top handle, and that one I really like. It also features a NATO rail on the bottom, but it has these screws, so you can actually slide the entire thing to the front or the back. And what's really cool about this is if you're still using your camera as a hybrid camera, you can adjust it so that you can actually still use it and look through the viewfinder without this poking out an eye. In the beginning, I thought this was actually not really cool because that way it's really short and uncomfortable to hold. But then when I discovered that it's way easier to just put your finger through here and hold it that way, this is actually not only the most comfortable, but also the most secure way to hold your camera. And this is actually something that I've gotten so used to that when using any other top handle, I'm really missing that feature. So as you can see, I already mounted a monitor mount to it and this one is from Small Rig as well. And I mounted it to the front as I've already said and this way you can do it on this one as well as the one that I showed you previously. And I really like that design because it's so easy to adjust the position of your monitor with it and you don't really have to screw or unscrew anything. This top handle has one downside though, and that is that there's no additional mounting options to actually mount a microphone directly to your top handle. So you need to take your microphone and mount it to your camera body instead. So now let's take this top handle and actually mount it to our camera body. So you just slide it on here. And the next thing you need to do is to tighten your screw. And this in my particular case is a little bit less easy because I have that big of a lens attached to it but there it is. So really quick and easy. And if you can see, it actually is not in the way when shooting um, photos. So you can adjust it a little bit more, put it towards the front so that it actually is not in the way at all. And that way you can use the camera still as a hybrid camera and just rock around with this when shooting pictures as well as videos. So as I've already said, next up on our list is the external monitor. And I like shooting with external monitors for serious video work at all times because it's so much easier to frame your shots, expose your shots, as well as pull focus if you're doing this manually. And I've been using different kind of external monitors with the EOS R5 and the R6, including ones that actually are able to control your camera. But overall, I always got back to the Fieldworld LUT6 because this is, in my opinion, the perfect companion with the EOS R6 as well as the EOS R5. And I also featured this monitor in various behind the scenes with the R5 and the R6. I also made a dedicated video about this, so I won't talk about this in length, but I think six inch is the perfect size for the R5. Of course you can go 7 inch but that makes the whole rig a little unbalanced so overall I think 6 inch is the perfect solution when it comes to size as well as viewability. Honestly, the overall build quality of the Fieldworld at 6 could be a little bit better. So when adjusting the monitor, sometimes it does feel like the plastic could break in the future. So I would recommend just grabbing it on the metal side and not only using it on the plastic side. So of course, when we wanna connect our external monitor to our rig, we need a cable. And I found this on Amazon. It's a micro HDMI to full HDMI. It's coiled, it's small. I never had any problems with it. So this one I can totally recommend to add to our rig. All right. I forgot to talk about one more thing and I know you guys are going to ask and rightfully so. 
And the question might be, why am I not using an external recorder? And that is a legit question. So quite honestly, when you're using the EOS R5 or the R6 as your main dedicated video camera, then the Atomos Ginger, Ginger. <laughs> then an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja is probably a really good idea. Not only does it cut down on your recording limits, but it also gives you a little bit more time before the camera overheats. Plus, it also records in ProRes, so you don't have these really hard to edit files that it usually shoots internally. So that brings up the question, why am I not using an external recorder? And that has several reasons. Number one, I don't like to have another point of failure. And if you record externally via an HDMI cable, there's always this extra added layer of failure that you might not record because you unplugged the cable or something is wrong on the external disk, whatever. But that is definitely not the main reason. The main reason is I just don't like the Atomos Ninja as an external monitor. I think it's not bright enough to really pull focus or judge your framing and exposure when shooting in bright sunlight and I also think it's a little bit too small. I think the 6 inch of the field world is the exact right size and when shooting on the C300 I'm always using a 7 inch and I probably would use a 7 inch on the R5 as well if it just wouldn't off balance the entire rig because the 7 inch is too big. So the 5.5 inch or is it even just a 5 inch of the Atomos Ninja 5 is just a little bit too small for me. Plus again, it's not bright enough for me to work out in bright sunlight because I'm shooting a lot of manual stuff. So for me, I just don't like the monitor. But if this was my only and main camera for shooting video, I would probably invest into a Ninja 5 as well. So that just being said. So now let's talk about the sound. And I featured this microphone in pretty much all of my videos because it's my absolute favorite shotgun microphone for the R5 or R6 and that is the video mic NTG. So I made a full review about this but quickly three things why I really like this microphone. Number one, it has great sound quality for the price. Number two, it comes with this gain meter on the back. So this way you can actually attach it to the camera and you don't really have to go into the menus while shooting. So when something changes while running and gunning, you can quickly just turn this knob right here and and this way it's actually way easier and way quicker than having to go into the camera itself. And the third thing I really like about this knob is that now you can dial down the internal preamps of the R5 or R6 because quite honestly they're not the best and that way you can just adjust the gain on the microphone itself and that way get even better audio quality. So this microphone has my 100% recommendation and I also featured this windshield which is also a must have if you're shooting outdoors at all and I will also link this in the description below and the combination of this actually makes for really great sound on location while running and gunning or even vlogging when combined with the EOS R5. But now we need to attach it to our setup and there is a cold shoe on top of our rig but unfortunately that doesn't work because now our monitor is slightly in the way so that won't work. So we need to find another solution for this and I have one for you. So what we need to do is we need to get ourselves one of these cold shoes and attach it to our cage. And I highly recommend getting a couple of those on Amazon because I always need those when I don't have them. So I even ordered six more because I started losing them and I just want to attach them to everything. They're really handy. So the way I did it is I attached this to the side of my cage. So right here, I just put it right in the middle and you need to see where it fits the best so that it doesn't interfere with your microphone and uh, headphone ins and outs. But once you attach this real quick right here, so let's actually do this right in the middle. I don't know if this is the right spot or not. All right, so now that we have attached it, we can use our microphone and just slide it in here real quick, bam. Another really cool thing about this microphone is that the Rikot mount is actually adjustable. So if this is actually sitting on top of our port, we can now go ahead, unscrew this right here. Let's actually tighten this microphone and just slide it to the front. So now it's out of the way of our ports and we can actually use this. And this way we actually have a shotgun microphone pointed pint to our subject and overall, now we have everything in one place. We have a top handle, 
we have a microphone, we have an external monitor, and this way we just turned our EOS R5 or R6 into a really capable dedicated video camera real quick. But we're not entirely done here because I already mentioned that we need ND filters when shooting outdoors. If you watched any of my videos, I love the 28 to 70 because this is a great lens for video or photography, but it has a 95 millimeter filter thread. So it's not that easy to get ND filters for it, but I found a solution and that comes from Freewell. So the filter that I'm using is a variable ND filter with hard stops from Freewell and that comes in 95 millimeters as well. And I really like this ND filter for several reasons. One is that it doesn't have any cross polarizations like you usually find on cheaper ND filters. It also doesn't have any vignetting. And the only thing that I don't really like about it is that it does have a slight green tint, which really isn't a problem on the EOS R5 because the EOS R5 already leans a little bit towards the magenta. So this is actually fixed with the green tint, but on the R6 that is on the warmer side, that even adds to it. Again, you can fix this either in post or you fix it on set by setting your custom white balance. So overall, it's really not that big of a deal, but I wish for this to not be there at all. But again, this is the best solution that I have found and they are really high quality ND filters and I haven't found any better. They also come in different filter threads. So if you really wanna have a streamlined setup and you're using the 15 to 35, as well as the 28 to 70, for example, you can get one 30, uh, 82 millimeter version as well as the 95 millimeter version and then you have everything covered. The one that I have is a two to five stop and this is usually the range that I most of the times operate in but if you really shoot a lot in high noon and bright sunlight then you might actually want to get the other version with the higher stop count as well. But if you're not using the 28 to 70 and you're looking for the highest quality possible, they also have magnetic ND filters. And we've been loving these and using these for all of our 82 millimeter filter thread lenses because they're so easy to just pop onto your lens, take them off whenever you don't need them anymore, and they have an amazing image quality. No color casts and they don't have any loss of sharpness, also no vignetting at all. And you can stack them on top of each other so you don't really have to have six of them. But basically for what we're doing, two of them are fine. So you have a two stop and I think we have a four, top, uh, four stop. And when you combine them, you have basically six stops. So this is the way that we've been shooting with those. And unfortunately they don't have a filter thread size for the 28 to 70. But if you're not using the 28 to 70, I highly recommend the magnetic and filters because they're amazing. So there you have it. Now we turned our EOS R5 or EOS R6 into a baby cinema camera with an external monitor, a microphone, a top handle, a cage, variable ND filters. And now we actually turned our cameras into very capable, dedicated video machines. As I already said, I'm trying to link all the stuff that I showcased here in this video down in the description below. So check them out if you wanna get yours. Furthermore, if you're interested in more content about the EOS R5, we shot a commercial recently with the EOS R5. And the next video on this channel will be a full breakdown of this commercial, including the budget breakdown, what equipment we used and the editing. So make sure to be subscribed and put your notification bell on as well. So you can actually see it once I upload it. And if you did help, <sighs> And if you find this video helpful, then maybe consider giving it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. And we're so close to 25,000 subscribers. And my goal is to hit those by the end of the year. So if you haven't already, make sure to be subscribed. And I hope to see you on the next one.